Hello again, everyone. Today I am here with some very special fountain pen ink to swatch for you. These are all Troublemaker inks and they are really hard to come by just because they're a rather small company and they don't release them very often. These I got from Shigure Inks or Shigure Inks. I never know how to say it. If anybody knows whether it's Shigure or Shigure, because uh, I want to be saying it the proper way, let me know. Um, but they, uh, the store actually sent me an email because I had signed up for in stock notifications on all of the different colors that I uh, wanted to get from Troublemaker and they were doing the order process differently these days. So basically um, they were doing it in order of when you signed up for each color. So they sent me a little email and said that I could purchase these three um, and of course I purchased all three and uh, I'm going to swatch them for you so you can see them. So what I would recommend, uh, I know there's a couple of other shops that sell these and I think you used to be able to order direct from them. I've never done that, but, um, but I would definitely go to the shop Shigure Inks that I put uh, a link to below. If you are interested in these inks, uh, they have a variety of colors. There's, there's a ton of different colors. Um, but if you're interested, get on the in stock notification list. So I am going to be swatching these today in my little swatch book here that I'm going to put a uh, link below to the video where I go through this setup. This is a Chic Sparrow E class and it's an A6. And today I'm going to be doing both the Cola Ring <clears throat> little note paper. Um, the Cola Ring papers. <laughs> I'm going to be doing those in addition to some swatches in my book here. And I'm using the usual tools. Um, I'm using this glass dip pen and this automatic pen, which is a three size 3A, both of which the link is in that setup video. I'm not always using this fancier glass dip pen, but I find that I get a little bit of a better line than the Moon Man glass dip pen on this thicker paper. So I like to use this one when I'm doing swatches on that. So I'm putting those off to the side and that reminds me I have a little pot of water off to the side but I had not opened it. So let me do that. And then I also have a paper towel to wipe off my tools in between. So let's see, I'm gonna start <clears throat> with this blue one, which is called Opon Channel Blue. And I'm going to go ahead and get one of these cards ready. And these cards, I simply made a little square here with a square template. And uh, then I'm going to color in the swatch in that and then do a few other things. If you've seen my swatching on the channel before on these, <clears throat> it'll be the same as before. But Let's see, so this is the Opon Channel Blue, which I am doing first. It's a really beautiful blue. I'm gonna keep it as, as is, but I will, as far as the size here, but I will put it up to the camera towards the end so that you can see. All right, so let's go ahead and dip in here. They do have a rather narrow bottle top, which is okay. Uh, it's not as bad as some inks. <laughs> But uh, sometimes I find that I get a lot of ink on my automatic pen when I dip it in there, but this time I managed to be okay. So I think why everybody really likes these inks is they have so many really unique colors. Um, and I'm, I'm actually not going to rinse that off. I'm going to go ahead and do the square here. Uh, and they have a lot of interesting shading colors which I think a lot of people like. This one has a little bit of sheen to it and is really, really pretty. It's a really nice dark teal, which I, I tend to love dark teals. I have uh, several smaller areas in my house painted a color that is similar to this and I never get tired of it. I, I really, really love it. Actually, the paint that I've used was probably probably a little bit more blue than this. It's uh, a color called Hague Blue by Pharaoh and Ball, which is one of the most beautiful blue interior paint colors I've ever seen. So, 
but it's pretty dark so I only put it in a few smaller areas like my entryway and a little transition area that's essentially like a hallway. Okay, so there we go. That's with the automatic pan. I'm going to rinse that off now. And I end up working with so much water media and then these, this new setup I'm using with these lights <clears throat> does tend to reflect. I'm trying to figure out if there's something I can do about that, but I think, you know, you, you sacrifice a little for <laughs> better visibility <laughs> with the lights up ahead here. So this is, let me put this off to the side here so I don't smear that. So this is Troublemaker. Opon channel, is that channel with two ends? Channel blue. Lovely. All right. And then normally I write the brand name in cursive on here. Although my T's are never that good, so I always end up doing sort of a cheater T, <laughs> capital T. Troublemaker. Oh, I see a little bit of uh, uh, fuzzing out here on this. So this is Opon. And I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then I'm going to see if I can get an ink circle from the cap. I think this is one of the brands that works okay for that. Let me go ahead and try it. Uh, and one of the things, too, is I have decided that, because uh, I, I didn't wait to film these to see what your input would be, as to whether you prefer me swatching in this book or on these little sheets. So I'm doing both for a little while, but I'm also doing less uh, bottles of ink at a time. But this one, it's all Troublemaker, so there you go. And that showed up pretty well. Okay. Only got a little bit of ink on my hands, so success. <laughs> I'm gonna put this off to the side and I'll bring it back at the end, but you can see it's pretty much almost entirely dry in that big swatch. And it has a really nice, almost magenta sheen on here. Uh, it's a little bit more magenta on this one than on this one. This one, it looks a little more red and a little more subtle. But like I said, I'll bring that back out at the end. And then I'm going to be doing the Hanging Rice next, which is a sort of uh, funky green color. And I will get another one of my little sheets there. Okay, so you can see it's a, it's a really pretty, it's almost like a sap green color. At least that's what, what it looks like in the bottle. Looks a little different swatched, so we'll see. Yeah, this is just a gorgeous color. And all of these colors are very saturated. <clears throat> Let me straighten that out on the bottom a little bit. And then I'm going to go ahead and do this. It gets a little more <laughs> tricky the more um, ink I have on the page there. So I'm actually going to put it over here a little bit so that I'm not smearing. I'm actually amazed that I end up not smearing every single um, swatch that I have in here because <laughs> that seems seems like it would be my style, but uh, I've had pretty good luck with these, although I did go a little too far into that corner there. Let me get some more ink on my pen. This is just such a beauty. It does look a little bit like a sap green watercolor, even in the swatch. I've only uh, put this in a pen. I haven't done the swatching until now of this. So this is really super pretty. I'm trying to get some variation so that you can see <clears throat> different aspects here, like with the shading. All right, gorgeous. Rinse that tool off real quick.
So greens are kind of tricky in my opinion, at least for fountain pen ink. I feel like some are really successful and others um, just don't show up very well in my opinion, but uh, this is a really good one. Troublemaker, <clears throat> hanging rice. And then I'm going to put that on here as well. Dip another time. Rinse off that glass dip pen. And then I'm going to try and do the same cap trick here. See if that works. I'm going to put it here. I don't want to wait too long because I don't want it to dry. All right. Oh, yeah, that's a very clean one. Okay. And then we have one more color left. And again, I'm going to put this one off to the side and I'll bring it back towards the end, but it's a really, a really beautiful color. Okay, and this one is Grapevine. Really saturated, beautiful purple. Yes, gorgeous. These are just as gorgeous in, as swatches as they are um, in pens. Oh, let me grab one of my little coloring sheets here. And then again, I'm gonna work on this other side of the page here just so that I can try not to have smudging on that wet sample over there. And I do wonder if my automatic pen may be due for replacement because I'm getting a little bit more of a wavy edge, although more so on this paper, which is a little bit more absor uh, absorbent. <laughs> for some reason, I'm always having a problem with that word, absorbent. Um, but yeah, I've been getting a little bit more of a wavy line on the edges as opposed to a really nice clean line. So I do wonder like, is it time for me to get another automatic pen? Because, you know, they don't last forever, but, um, but it's been doing pretty good so far. All right, so that's our last color. Let me make sure, because these are so staining, I want to make sure I get any of that leftover pigment out of my automatic pen. And we're good there. And then what is the color again? Grapevine. Okay, I'll remember that. Grapevine, let me do another dip here. And then once again, a little cap ring, and then we'll be done. And I will show these to you again, closer up, so that you can get a better look at them. And I can show you this process again. There we go, that was another good one. All right. 
So again, I'm going to put this off to the side. I will bring each of these back again towards the end, which we're almost approaching the end. But I'm going to show you this tr Troublemaker Opon Channel Blue, really beautiful dark teal, Troublemaker Hanging Rice, which is this really beautiful green color, almost like a mossy color, really nice, and some really nice shading in that little square swatch there. They all have pretty good shading. And uh, and they all, well, I don't think the hanging rice has any sheen. If it does, it's very subtle. But both the grapevine and the Opon Channel Blue do. And there's that grapevine there on the bottom. So these are great saturated colors. And I'm going to bring these back. This one's entirely dry now. Yeah, one of the reasons why I don't, personally, I don't like these as much as the Tamoe River paper, which is in this notebook here for swatching, is that very few uh, fountain pen friendly papers that you actually use for writing are like this paper. I mean, you get kind of an interesting um, color variation because as you can see on this paper, it looks a lot more green than on this one. It leans definitely more green on this paper. So I think it's more to illustrate um, you're going to get different effects depending on your paper and you should always swatch out your uh, inks. If I mean, if the color really matters to you, you should always be swatching out your inks before you use a, pa a particular paper because you are going to have different impacts or different effects on different papers. I just love this hanging rice. Oh, and so I was noticing a little bit of fuzzing, but now that it's dry, I'm not noticing it a whole bunch like a little bit of fuzz around the edges. And I certainly didn't notice that on the Tamoe River paper. Um, so it might just be the effect of this more absorbent paper and not necessarily the ink. And I think this one's dry now too. I'm a stuff dry so fast here, especially as it gets drier um, towards the winter months. But I definitely think with all of these, you're getting a little bit of a different color in the different paper. I don't think I really compared those very well, but. Like this, it looks darker on this paper as opposed to this paper, but there you go. All right, that's all I had for you today. If you <laughs> feel free to subscribe to keep track of future videos on my channel. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like. I hope to see you next time, but in the meantime, have a great day. Thanks so much. Bye.